Should you save images as JPEG or PNG? And does it even matter? Well, if you're building websites, the answer is yes, it definitely matters. Because if you get this wrong, it means your site will be sluggish instead of fast, and things will look fuzzy instead of crisp and clean. And by the way, even if you don't do images and graphics and stuff on your own site, show this video to your designer. Because shockingly, many designers don't even know what I'm about to tell you. Hello, I'm Shane Milach from Thrive Themes, and let's talk about image formats because for your website, it really matters to get this right. So the basic rule here is that for photographs, you want to save them as JPEG files, and for graphics and screenshots, you want to save those as PNG files. Now here's the thing, if you load up Photoshop and you save the same image as either JPEG or PNG and then you look at them, you'll probably see basically no difference. So here's a photograph saved as JPEG, same photograph saved as PNG, basically no difference, especially on the video, there's some compression on the video as well, so we can't tell the difference. Same thing for a graphic, right? Here we have a graphic with some text saved as a JPEG, saved as a PNG, same thing. So why should you care? Well, like I said, it's about using this on websites and it's about speed. On a website, we want to keep files as small as possible so that our pages load as quickly as possible. And image files are generally the largest files on a web page. So all images that you upload to a website should be compressed first. And it's in the compression that the difference between JPEG and PNG really comes out. So let's look at a photograph. We save it as a JPEG and we compress it. And the result is that we lose a lot of that data. The file size is much smaller the photograph still looks fine, and this is great for uploading. If we take the same thing, we take this as a PNG, which is the wrong choice to make, and now we compress that, the result is that A, the image doesn't look as nice as the JPEG compressed version, and B, the file size is much larger. So making the wrong choice here, saving a photograph as a PNG instead of a JPEG, means you have a larger, uglier file and as a result, a slower, uglier website. And the same is true for our graphics. So we've got a graphic with some text, we save that as a PNG, compress it, and it still looks crisp, and the file size is smaller. We save it as a JPEG, compress that, and it looks terrible. Now I'm exaggerating the compression a little bit here, but the thing is that JPEG compression works by kind of bunching together some pixels and blurring the lines here and there, which on a photograph you won't really notice. But when you want to have sharp lines and readable text, this is exactly the wrong thing to do to try and save data. Now, also a little side note here. You might be looking at this thinking, you know what, this doesn't bother me so much. Is this really something I should care about? Well, please keep in mind, there are two kinds of people in the world. There are some people who will look at a slightly fuzzy graphic and go, hmm. And there are some people to whom this is nails dragged across a chalkboard. I'm serious, seeing this kind of fuzziness, this kind of offness is almost physically painful for some people. And maybe you can tell by now I'm one of those people. So think of the people, think of the people who visit your website. So once again, photographs saved as JPEG and compressed results in small file size and nice looking image. And graphics and screenshots saved as PNG and compressed means they stay sharp and the file size also remains small. To generalize this a little further, what you can think of is that anything that has many colors, a lot of contrast, a lot of stuff going on, gradients and so on, as you generally have in a photograph, should be a JPEG. And anything where you wanna have sharp lines and clearly separated areas of color should be a PNG. Now with those ground rules set, there are a couple of other things to keep in mind. The first of which is transparency. So a big advantage that PNG has over JPEG is that it can include transparent areas. A typical example for a website would be that you want to create a hero image. So here I have a photograph and you've cut this out so that it can be placed on any background. And even though it's a photograph, because you need this transparency, this should be saved as a PNG with a transparent background. And then my second note is that sometimes you'll have an image that blurs the lines. So maybe it's a screenshot of a website that contains photographs. So you have a bit of both. Or maybe it's just a graphic that has many gradients and shadows and things going on. It's not quite clear which of these two categories it belongs in. In this case, what I recommend you do is you simply save as both formats, save as JPEG, save as PNG, 
compress both of them and compare the image quality and file size. Usually you can just pick the one that ends up being the smaller file, or if that looks really ugly, then you pick the one that looks nicer. All right, and while we're on the topic, a few bonus tips for you. Bonus tip number one, another image format that is good to keep an eye on is SVG. Now this is great for many reasons, but it's not quite as accessible as the PNG and JPEG image formats. In general, I would say that for things like this, an icon, you know, single color, clear icon, use SVG. The great thing about it is it's infinitely scalable and it remains the same file size, which is tiny, and it always stays super crisp. Bonus tip number two, if you have a photograph and you wanna show it with a circular cutout on your web page, don't save it as a PNG with a transparent background. Instead, save it as a square image, as JPEG, and then add large rounded corners to it using CSS or an editor like Thrive Architect, because large rounded corners on a square thing results in a perfect circle. And if you're handy with CSS, you can take this even further and draw all kinds of shapes and cutouts around images. So the rule I said before about transparency depends on your ninja skills with CSS. And bonus tip number three, here's how to compress your images. I recommend using the service Kraken, kraken.io. They have an amazing compression algorithm. You can see here how it works. You basically load up this web interface. You simply upload your images and it will compress them for you and show you how much data has been saved. Great thing about Kraken is that it crunches down the data to an amazing degree, sometimes as much as 90%, while still keeping the image quality really high. So basically put all of your images through that before you upload them to your website. All right, so those are the rules for which image format to use and why you should really use the right one. I hope you found this helpful, and if you have any feedback or questions, please leave a comment below. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to see the blog post that goes with this video, which is a handy reference for everything I just laid out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.